from goal explosions out of nowhere, to moves we have never seen before, to an NHL record being set, unexpected things can often happen in an NHL game. After all, hockey is not scripted and you never know what will happen next. These are some of the NHL's most unexpected moments. First up is Game 7 of the first round Stanley Cup playoff series between the San Jose Sharks and the Vegas Golden Knights in 2019. Vegas looks like it's on its way to the second round with a 3-0 lead almost halfway through the period. And things appear to get worse for San Jose when the center star Joe Pavaleski takes a high cross check off a of face off and gets a little help going off the ice. His head was slammed on the ice and he had to be attended to. After Pavaleski was helped off the ice, Cody Eakin got a 5 minute match penalty and therefore, even if the Sharks were to score on the power play, no matter how many times, they would still be on the power play for those 5 minutes. Okay, here we go. And they'll stay on the power play! Just 6 seconds into the extended power play, Logan Couture scores to make it 3-1. Sends it back across the That took six seconds, and the Sharks are on the board! He clearly thinks that there'll be more goals because he looks back at the San Jose bench and says, that's just one. And it takes only 49 more seconds for number two, as Thomas Hurdle tips in Eric Carlson's shot slash pass to make it 3-2. And a little over three and a half minutes into the penalty, Couture ties it at 3-3. Three to three. But the goal-hungry Sharks aren't done, and on the five-minute power play, with 49 seconds left in the man advantage, Kevin LeBlanc moves in from the right point and fires this shot past Marc-Andre Fleury for a 4-3 San Jose lead. Vegas is down. But not for long. The Golden Knights' Jonathan Marshall so ties it with 47 seconds left in OT to send this incredible Game 7 to overtime. And after a scoreless 20 minutes in the first overtime period, it only takes Barclay Goudreau a minute and 41 seconds in the second overtime to score the winner and send the Sharks into the second round. And the Golden Knights had to go back home to the strip. In the regular season, overtime periods are only 5 minutes long and then there's a shootout. And when you need a goal in the shootout to keep it going and avoid a loss right then and there, you would expect someone like a Boston Bruins star such as Brad Marchand to give you a pretty good chance of doing so. But Brad Marchand skates past the puck at center ice. He touches the puck just barely, but he does touch it. No goal! And the Flyers win in the shootout! 6-5 is your final! And touching the puck makes it an official unsuccessful attempt if the puck does not wind up in the net. The officials huddle and, as expected, the call is an unsuccessful attempt and the Bruins lose the game to the Philadelphia Flyers. This is a moment I love because I hate the rat, I'm sorry. The Dallas Stars, Mike Ribeiro, not only scores from the shootout attempt, but he does so using an unexpected between the legs move and has just one hand on his stick to guide the puck into the net. Reversal between the legs and through on a completely befuddled Peter Budai. Generally, NHL players are expected to score when they have the puck on their stick and an open net right in front of them. But, in the case here with the Vegas Golden Knights, Alec Tuck, taking the pass and presented with a goaltenderless cage, looked so open that Tuck didn't even bother to get under the puck and just redirects it along the ice. But out of nowhere comes the stick of Washington Capitals goalie Braden Holtby to stop the puck and deny Tuck with a tremendous, unexpected save. Fans are expected to stay in the stands, but... That's not what happens here. 
This plan. Thought it was a funny idea to climb over the glass and appears to be headed for referee Bill McCreary. But he never got there because the linesman Ron Asseltine put a blindside hit on the fan and sends him into the boards. The question is, will we be able to complete it? There's a fan coming out on the ice. Oh, he was hit by the linesman. I don't know what this young man expected when he climbed over the glass, but it certainly wasn't to get blasted into the boards by a linesman. That was unexpected. When an NHL player is behind the net, there's a number of things that he would usually be expected to do. But one of them is not what Carolina Hurricanes' Andre Shevnetskov does here. He picks the puck off the ice with the blade of his stick and kept the puck in the blade. Then, he raised the puck into the intersection of the goalpost and the crossbar and let the puck into the net behind or over the goaltender's shoulder. And by the way, just to make sure it's legal, his stick with the puck on the tape is below the bar. In other words, he did a lacrosse goal. He's a Michigan man, I'm telling you. And that happened in 2019. It was the first lacrosse style goal in an NHL game. So of course, David Riddick of the Calgary Flames was not expecting it. Next stop is an unexpected and almost impossible chance to stop from right in front of a goaltender. In OT, the Vancouver Canucks goaltender Jacob Markstrom is faced with a 3 on none against the St. Louis Blues after his teammates were trapped in the offensive zone. In other words, they were lazy. I'm just kidding. But as you may expect, the Blues score to win the game and Jaden Schwartz finally fires the puck in the net past Markstrom. As you see, the puck in the St. Louis' zone, Vancouver's Tyler Myers slips out and takes out another teammate. And Braden Shen, Alex Petrangelo and Schwartz are off to the races and Shen passes to Petrangelo and he gives an apple to Schwartz for the winner. And clearly, Markstrom is not happy. And that's why he's in Calgary now, folks. An NHL record certainly was not expected coming into the February 7th game in 1976 between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins at Old Maple Leafs Gardens. And certainly not from anyone with the Maple Leafs. They were 20 points behind the Bruins in the standings, including Toronto's star center and captain Daryl Sittler. He was in a scoring slump and was nursing a sore shoulder. And while Sittler assisted on goals from the linemate Lanny McDonald and defenseman Ian Turnbull, in the first period, things were pretty much business as usual as the Maple Leafs led 2-1 after the first 20 minutes. But here we go. Sittler turned it on and in the second period, he got three goals of his own and two assists on two goals by defenseman Borg Salme. This gave Sittler three goals and four assists for seven points in two periods. That was one point short of the then NHL record for points in a game. At the time, the only person who had the most combined goals and assists in a game was none other than legendary Hall of Famer Maurice the Rocket Richard. And he had five goals and three assists in a game during the 1944-45 season and Bert Olmsted, who also played with Montreal, tailed four goals and four assists in a contest in 1953-54. With Toronto leading 8-4, a statistician informed Sittler between the second and third period that he was only one short of tying the all-time lead record for points in a game. And it took only 44 seconds after the puck was dropped to begin the third period for Sittler to tie the point record. From just outside the crease, he banged in a pass from Salming for Sittler's fourth and eighth point of the night. And at 9.27 of the third period, Sittler shot a wrister past the Bruins goaltender David Reese for his fifth goal and ninth point getting the record. But oh no 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 no, Sittler was not done yet like I thought, he instead got his sixth goal of the night when his intended pass deflected off a, a Boston's defenseman skate and passed Reese into the net. And this 10 point game is a record that still stands. Oh 
and just for the record, they won 11-4. No one, not Wayne Gretzky, not Mark Messier, not Mario Lemieux, or Yammer Jagger, or even Sid the Kid or Connor McDavid have been able to even come close to breaking Sittler's mark. Since then, there have been a couple of players including Wayne Gretzky and Lemieux who did have 8 point games twice, but that's it. No one has even managed to score 9 points in a game aside from Sittler. Even 9 points wouldn't be a record, but it would still be very unexpected and talked about in the media like crazy. And there you have it, the NHL's most unexpected moments. Feel free to comment below on the ones you think were the most unexpected, or if we missed some that you think are even more unexpected. And if you like this video, you know the drill. Don't be a bender, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.